are, are, are wayward. Many times our flesh is running amok. Uh, you know, I told somebody the other night uh, that 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 uh, we t used to talk about this thing called your Christian witness. Uh, and 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 saints of God, I know that none of us. I say it all the time on this show that none of us are sinless. One word. But if you're a believer in Christ, child of God, you sure should sin less. Two words. Folks, folks are watching when we're not looking. They're watching what we do, watching what we say, seeing if we follow the precepts of the word of God. You're wondering why they're coming against you, but because you're a believer, sometimes it's our behavior. They're watching to see if we really believe that we believe. If, if they're watching to see, I said the other night that, that, that the beauty shop and barber shop crowd is notoriously hard on the church, but those those folks have been talking in the last few years, and guess what? They've been telling the truth. Child of God, I'm giving this edict out. Check your motives. I know that you will go to sleep in Nahum and you wake up in Habakkuk. But, but I'm telling you, you still have a struggle with this flesh. Romans 8, Paul in writing to the church at Rome, preach, Steve. I'm getting my flow. Uh, uh, Romans 7, verse 18, he said, for I know this is Paul who has uh, received so many accolades uh, by, via scripture, wrote most of the New Testament. He's the right that we, we, we look up to. But it says here in Romans, Paul talking about his own self, for I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Child of God, check your motives. I know we got to get out of this pharisaical day that we now live in. We live in a pharisaical day where you can sit right next to someone in service that speaks in 18 different prayer languages all service long, but they won't speak to you in English when service is over. Uh, they can speak in tongues in the house of God, but they'll curse you out on the parking lot right outside. Child of God, I'm giving this edict that we need to check our motives. Uh, we need to look deeper into our hearts. We need to look. I used to be scared to come around the saints. I was scared of those sainted mothers that used to say, Steve, the Lord showed me you in a dream. I was wondering that had me a little nervous because I didn't know what the Lord had showed them. But there was a thing that I had at that time and a thing that so many people in the church had, this thing called reverential fear. Not fear. Uh, you know, you know, the fear of the Lord is beginning to struggle. It's, it's uh, reverential fear where you uh, know that God is awesome, that he sits high and he looks low, that his the earth is his footstool, that the silver is his, the gold is his, uh, that, that he sits on the circle of the earth. Folks, we serve an awesome God. We all sing it, but, but, but there should be a reverential fear that we are scared. I know, you, you know, uh, what, what does it say in that scripture? He said, uh, uh, It'll come to me about being expedient. Uh, many things are lawful, but they're not expedient. Child of God, I'm speaking and I'm talking and going on the inside uh, of dealing with this enemy sometimes that's in us, and it's our motives. Many of us have motives that don't line up with the word of God. We have agendas that aren't in sync and don't kiss the truths of the Holy Writ since we've been saved. You know, don't make it like you had to be a heathen than to not line up with God's word. We we got credentials. We got we got the cross. We got a chain. We got we got all types of ecumenical garb, and we're still not lining up with God's word. Child of God, I'm speaking the word to you. We need to check our motives. Uh, uh, you know, because we have a day now where there's no reverential. We'll we we we'll, we'll come and sit right next to pastor uh, on uh, on a row and know that we're living in sin. That was a season when they told me I didn't even want to come around the saints if I knew I didn't have it right because uh, I felt like somebody was so in sync with God that they knew that what I was living. But now we'll do it. There's no standard. We smoke right on the parking lot. Uh, folks, I'm not saying that, 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 that we're sinless creatures, but again, we sure should be sinning less. Uh, the, the text also 
belies uh, uh, and touches on unforgiveness. Uh, folks, I once met with two sisters, and they were in their 70s, and they were bearing their 90-year-old mother, and one of the sisters told the other sister that I've had a problem with you and mother for years. And the other sister said, what problem did you have with me and mother? And then that sister said, when we were five, uh, first of all, I'm dazed. I, I said, wow, I'm sitting here with sisters talking about a 65-plus-year-old grudge. Uh, I, I talked to another lady who was well into her 70s, and she had been humiliated by a former elementary school principal and made to come on stage and humiliated in front of the whole school unjustly. But she, uh, uh, she was uh, talking about it in second hand. Now, here she is well into her 70s, and the principal that did it is long gone in somebody's cemetery, but she was crying tears in 2019. Folks, there's a whole lot of things that we deal with that we need to let go of. Matthew 24 verse 4 said, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man shall deceive you. Child of God, we got to check our motives. Sometimes we, we're looking at the next man's sin and we're looking at that person's sin. But we're, we're like I said, we're living in this pharisaical day. We like greetings in the marketplace. We like being called Rev. We like being called Bishop. We like being called Doc, even though we ain't got no doctor degree. But I'm speaking this word to you that sometimes you got to look at your motives. Check your motives. Child of God, you got to watch some things that come out of your mouth sometimes because your mouth is, will betray what's really going on on the inside of you. Now, where did you get that from, uh, preacher? The Holy Writ says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Folks, if I be around you long enough, your mouth is going to betray your walk with God. I know that you talking like you wake up, like I said, in Nahum, and you 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 wake up and you wake up and wake up and go to sleep in Nahum and wake up in Jude, but your mouth will give you up many times. So I'm, I know that we're living in a day where perilous times shall come. What makes people uh, 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 shoot a person over eating the last pork chop. What makes people kill you over drinking the last of the Kool-Aid? How can you shoot somebody over road rage just because a guy passed you on the left side? Folks, there's got to be a whole list of agendas and motives that don't line up with God's word. Uh, and that's our problem here in the African-American community that, that, that we don't value our, our brother's life, our sister's life, that we'll kill each other over meaningless stuff. We need to check our motives. Motives. Child of God, I'm coming on the inside. I know we all pious and we all like to talk about that I'm this and I'm that and we want to build up our, our spiritual resumes, but sometimes our spiritual resumes uh, betray what's going on in our heart. We got some elders that, 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 that get into some elders type stuff. We got, we got folks that are living in sin, that are wrestling with sin, no matter what your title, no matter what your distinction, no matter what your pedigree may be, all of us are battling the battle that happens in these earth suits. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Child of God, I'm telling you, I'm putting a mirror on you tonight and putting one on myself. I'm not pointing any accusations at you, but we all need to check our motives. We need to check our hidden agendas. We, we need to check everything that, 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 that's not lining up with God's word. We must work diligently to not be consumed by our lust. Our, this flesh craves more and more and more. Sin will take you farther than you ever planned on going. It'll keep you longer than you ever played on, planned on staying. And it'll make you pay more than you ever thought you'd pay. Folks, look, you got to go by that little adage by the world that everything that that look good, it ain't good. Child of God, I'm speaking that word because we're living in a day. Uh, we see the 
of false prophets arising. We see, and they are deceiving many. But we see the hearts of men have waxed so cold. They've grown cold. But And, and you know, the admonition is that he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Folks, this world will hate you because if, it, if, if you fall in a man that it hated, it's going to hate you too. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, a Matthew 5. Uh, that's going down a little further. Revile you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Folks, I'm speaking that to you. We need to watch and we need to pray. Uh, you know, I know that we all feel like we got heaven bound, but Paul said that, oh, wretched man, Paul looking at himself, now he is, he's the author of much of the New Testament, but when he talked about himself, uh, uh, this is what Paul said in Romans 7, verses 19 through 25. He said, for the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, uh, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, whom shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Child of God, my brother and sister, I wasn't trying to come here and be Debbie Downer on tonight. But I do want you to know that we all have to wrestle with this flesh. And over and over again, uh, we need to have that admonition uh, that, that, that we, 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 we look, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying for us to not become 21st century advocates, uh, uh, 21st century Pharisees and Sadducees. They were sad. You see, uh, uh, because I, I mean, we look, we concentrate on the superficial. We concentrate that we seeing in the marketplace. We like to be seen. We like to be heralded. We like the uppermost seats in the temple. We like to be uh, greeted in the marketplace, but our hearts are still cold. We're still turning our hearts. We're still fighting and bickering while the whole world is watching us. We're called to be the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot to be, be here. We're called to be light in a world of darkness, and all of that is being hindered because we will not check our motives. Folks, I'm sorry. There's some things that we need to get straight. We need to look deep down on the inside and know that we're still a work in progress, that God is still working on me. Check your motives. My brother, my 